business book summaries. Turning pages, changing games, where every book is a new frontier. Greetings. Today I will delve into the intriguing world presented in the book Seven Rules of Power, Surprising But True by Jeffrey Peffer, a distinguished professor specializing in organizational behavior at Stanford University. Organizational behavior explores human actions and attitudes within groups or organizations, and the power discussed in this book centers on the outcomes stemming from these behaviors. Professor Peffer, renowned for his expertise, imparts his wisdom through a popular elective at Stanford titled The Path to Power. This book, essentially a condensed version of the course, aims to guide individuals in comprehending the necessity of wielding power in the workplace and provides insights into the methods of obtaining and sustaining it. Before we delve further, remember that we regularly share new content. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel Business Book Summaries and hit the notification bell for the latest updates. Now, let's delve into the core of our exploration, the enhancement of workplace power. As the book underscores, the pursuit of power and the strategies to amplify it differ from person to person. The book serves as a confidential manual for success, leaving the responsibility on each reader to decide how to harness its teachings. The initial step in fortifying workplace power involves breaking away from the shackles of imposter syndrome. This psychological term encapsulates individuals who, despite their accomplishments, harbor doubts about their abilities and fear exposure as frauds. This mindset can substantially undermine one's power, as self-perception significantly influences how others perceive them. To overcome imposter syndrome, one must assess and reshape self-descriptions, eliminating negative portrayals and emphasizing achievements and strengths. An illustrative example from the book recounts a female student who, feeling overshadowed in her competitive workplace, learned to reframe her narrative, spotlighting her unique qualifications. This emphasizes the importance of accentuating strengths to shape a positive public perception. For those grappling with confidence, a beneficial approach is to compare oneself with those in higher positions. Often, the realization dawns that others are not necessarily more educated or accomplished, and their success may be attributed to luck or family background. Stepping out of the comfort zone and actively presenting oneself in a positive light also contributes to gaining confidence. Moving forward, the book urges us to break free from an obsession with winning others' approval. Constantly seeking approval can create an impression of incompetence. Research from Princeton University reveals an inverse relationship between warmth and competence, suggesting that excessive eagerness to please may compromise perceived competence. Establishing a reputation for competence rather than amiability in new environments becomes crucial. In essence, the journey to enhancing workplace power involves breaking old patterns, reframing narratives, and establishing a reputation for competence. The book serves as a guide, offering valuable insights that, when applied with discernment, can pave the way to professional success. The concept of assertiveness is a cornerstone in the realm of effective leadership, according to the insights shared in the book. It highlights that showcasing capability up front lays the foundation for later displays of warmth, rendering them more impactful without compromising the perception of strength. Leaders are cautioned against unveiling vulnerabilities, as this could erode their authority and respect, even if it enhances their likability. Instead, projecting confidence and control is advised, creating a balance between approachability and a commanding presence. This counsel extends beyond leaders and is pertinent for anyone navigating a professional setting. The book stresses the importance of withholding unnecessary revelations of weaknesses, underlining the value of projecting competence and authority. Assertiveness, a key theme, involves a measured use of apologies and the unabashed expression of legitimate demands or ideas, even if it risks causing offense. While there may be apprehension about potential dislike, the book underscores the significance of balancing likability with the projection of competence and authority, as this dynamic can profoundly shape one's career trajectory. Drawing from a comprehensive study on the impact of agreeableness on career success, the book presents intriguing findings. It unveils that agreeable individuals experience a negative effect on their salary, with men particularly affected. 
This stems from a tendency for agreeable individuals to prioritize likability over career objectives, potentially leading them to miss out on pivotal opportunities for advancement. In contrast, the book delves into decisiveness. Research from the University of California, Berkeley suggests that decisiveness does not directly influence power gain. It triggers a duality of effects enhancing dominance and aggression, yet diminishing engagement in generous and group-oriented actions, thereby affecting power acquisition. The study defines decisiveness as a complete disregard for the impact on others. The author proposes that if decisiveness doesn't significantly impact power acquisition, concerns about likability should take a backseat in career considerations. The book advocates for a steadfast focus on true aspirations and goals, cautioning against allowing the desire for social approval to overshadow personal interests and plans. Having traversed these nuanced aspects of assertiveness and decisiveness, the book invites readers to reflect on the delicate balance required in navigating the professional landscape. Escaping the fixation on gaining approval from others is a pivotal aspect discussed in the book and it propels us into the realm of breaking norms. Breaking norms is presented as a potent action for generating power. Extensive psychological studies consistently reveal that people subconsciously link the ability to defy norms with possessing power. When an individual engages in unconventional behavior, it tends to enhance the perception of their power. The power perception gained from breaking norms can materialize into tangible opportunities. An illustrative example from the book recounts the story of a Stanford University student aiming to attend an exclusive networking dinner. This event was strictly invitation only, and as an unknown student, she wouldn't typically receive an invitation. Leveraging her experience as a contributor to Forbes magazine, she contacted the event organizers, portraying herself as a Forbes writer without mentioning her student status. Her strategic approach led to the surprising offer of two options for attending. Choosing the Saturday dinner and even bringing her boyfriend along, she successfully secured the coveted invitation. The unexpected nature of her actions sent a signal of power to the organizers, emphasizing her importance and effectively securing the desired opportunity. Breaking norms also derives benefits from the element of surprise, reminiscent of a tactical ambush in warfare. In everyday life, this tactic can be advantageous. Jason Calacanis, a renowned angel investor and author, exemplifies this principle. His strategic approach to investing and timeless advice stems from a willingness to break norms and seize opportunities in the ever-evolving landscape of technology startups. The book encourages readers to embrace the power of breaking norms, showcasing how it can be a strategic tool in achieving desired outcomes. By understanding the psychological underpinnings and employing surprise as a tactical advantage, individuals can navigate professional and personal spheres with heightened effectiveness. The narrative emphasizes the transformative potential of defying expectations and boldly stepping into uncharted territories. The concept of timeless advice takes us into the realm of an angel investor who transformed $100,000 into an astounding $100 million. During his college years, when faced with financial challenges, without an appointment, he directly approached the dean's office and candidly shared his plight. Caught off guard, the dean reacted spontaneously, aiding the investor in securing a well-paid part-time job in the business school's competitive laboratory. The strength of this surprise tactic lies not only in catching people unprepared, but also in its profound impact on their emotions and cognition. Delving into the psychology behind this surprise tactic, scholars explain the neurobiological mechanism at play. The element of surprise induces a brief pause in the human brain, followed by a surge of intense curiosity. This surge compels individuals to comprehend the unfolding events. Essentially, unexpected actions captivate attention and pique curiosity. To make a lasting impression, one might consider undertaking unconventional acts that trigger a sense of surprise in others. In the exploration of breaking norms, the book provides numerous specific examples, offering two key strategies. Firstly, in situations where there's no risk of loss, taking chances can often lead to unexpected opportunities. Secondly, if an action is believed to be beneficial for oneself and the team and has not been attempted before, 
the advice is to proceed unless explicitly prohibited. The philosophy is to act first and seek approval later, even if it means asking for forgiveness afterward. Acknowledging that breaking norms can be intimidating, the author provides reassurance. While adhering to existing rules that set one up for success is advisable, the book contends that norms, especially in organizational contexts, often favor those who establish them or hold positions of advantage. Consequently, the author questions the rationale behind following rules that place individuals at a disadvantage. Conforming to such rules may mean succumbing to a future with limited opportunities and injustice. The book asserts the importance of critically evaluating and, if necessary, challenging norms to pave the way for a more equitable and opportunity-rich future. Unlocking the secrets of building power involves recognizing that while you can break rules strategically, there's a cardinal rule to always follow. This fundamental principle is the key that grants you the latitude to break norms in the first place. Now, delving into the establishment aspect after exploring the art of breaking, let's unravel how to systematically build power in the workplace. Elevating your workplace power requires a conscious cultivation of a high power stance, encompassing various facets such as image, body language, and verbal expression. Consider your image, reflecting on the message you want to convey through your attire. Adjust your appearance accordingly, or take a simpler approach by emulating the style of someone you admire. Effective, high-power body language involves incorporating more hand gestures while speaking, adopting open and expansive postures, maintaining closer proximity to others, and engaging in direct eye contact. Verbal expression plays a crucial role in projecting power. Speak with a loud volume, using shorter and more straightforward sentences. Express yourself clearly and concisely. Laugh freely and minimize weak language like um, uh, or kinda. The book also recommends occasional interruptions, reduced apologies, and selective displays of anger, emphasizing that these actions can strengthen your influence. However, it's crucial to be mindful of their potential impact on your likability using them judiciously based on your immediate goals. A particularly highlighted strategy is the strategic display of anger. Research indicates that people subconsciously perceive those who express anger as more powerful and intelligent, thereby enhancing their authority. This nuanced approach underscores the clever use of tactics to wield power effectively. The book guides readers through these detailed strategies emphasizing that the display of power is not a one-size-fits-all approach. It requires a thoughtful consideration of individual goals and the immediate context. By incorporating these principles into your professional repertoire, you can systematically build and wield power, navigating the intricate dynamics of the workplace with finesse and strategic acumen. Crafting your brand involves a critical element, the brand statement. Essentially, this means effectively telling your story. One fundamental story everyone needs is their self-introduction. The book suggests a basic template for this introduction. Start with two or three sentences highlighting your expertise and accomplishments, and then connect them to your personal journey. For example, consider Walker, a founder with a company focusing on beauty products for people of color. Walker often shares his personal struggle with shaving due to his coarse hair, which inspired him to create products specifically for people like him. His narrative aligns with the hero's journey archetype encountering a problem, struggling, overcoming it, and achieving personal growth. Such stories are naturally engaging, memorable, and likable, prompting the author's advice to share similar narratives. Beyond the essential self-introduction, it's equally crucial to narrate tales about your work achievements. The book describes this process as earn the merit and claim the credit. A compelling example is drawn from Deborah Liu, a former Facebook marketing VP. Initially, believing in letting her work speak for itself, she focused solely on her tasks. Despite developing a project that significantly contributed to Facebook's profits, it was soon forgotten. Faced with a sense of career stagnation, she participated in an executive coaching program where she learned the importance of vocalizing her and her team's accomplishments. In another project, she embraced the power of storytelling, transforming her professional trajectory. The book underscores the significance of incorporating personal and professional narratives into your brand statement. 
By blending expertise with personal experiences, you create a compelling and relatable story that resonates with others. As you navigate your journey, the stories you share become the building blocks of your brand, enhancing your visibility, influence, and overall impact. In the journey of defining your brand, a critical element is crafting a brand statement, an effective means of telling your story. The book underscores the importance of a self-introduction story, suggesting a basic template that intertwines your expertise and accomplishments with your personal journey. For instance, the founder of a beauty products company for people of color shares his personal struggle with shaving, leading to the creation of products tailored for individuals like him. Such stories align with the archetype of a hero's journey, making them naturally engaging, memorable, and likable. Beyond self-introductions, the book emphasizes the value of narrating tales about work achievements. Termed as earning the merit and claiming the credit, it advocates vocalizing your accomplishments. An illustrative example comes from Deborah Liu, a former Facebook marketing VP who initially focused solely on her tasks. Learning the importance of sharing achievements, she turned a challenging project into a breakthrough, gaining Zuckerberg's attention. This success became a new story of a small team achieving a breakthrough, fitting the hero's journey narrative. Understanding the power of storytelling, Lou and her team widely shared their story within Facebook, inspiring others. While many may feel hesitant to share their stories, viewing it as boastful, Lou redefines this act. She encourages reframing it, not as self-promotion, but as a means to inform superiors and colleagues about one's role and to secure recognition and resources for the team. The book reinforces the idea that if you don't tell your story, who will? Building a broad social network is also highlighted, recognizing its significance in fostering increased visibility and power. Effective networking involves valuing weak ties casual acquaintances that can provide diverse perspectives and opportunities. The book recommends becoming a structural whole connector, linking otherwise unconnected networks, yielding substantial benefits. Additional networking tips include making specific requests, setting aside weekly time for networking activities, and utilizing online interactions to maintain connection. The book emphasizes that keeping in touch doesn't necessitate intense or deep contact simple actions like casual chats, sharing articles, social media interactions, and birthday wishes can be highly effective in sustaining relationships. In summary, the book shares crucial insights on workplace power, emphasizing that power is not a dark art, but a tool for survival and amplification of capabilities. The discussion covers the process of breaking and establishing power, involving overcoming imposter syndrome, gaining approval, breaking norms, and developing a high power stance, personal brand, and broad social network. The concluding chapters delve into maintaining and utilizing acquired power, highlighting that the ability to gain power is a learnable skill. In conclusion, some may view the skills discussed in this exploration of power dynamics as insincere or mere tactics. However, the author regards them as strategic approaches within the realm of power. Even for those who may not wish to actively employ these tactics, understanding them is crucial as competitors might be utilizing such strategies. For those who choose to pursue power, the author reassures that it is a noble endeavor. Quoting the author, if we want power to be used for good, we need more good people to wield it. The essence of striving for power lies in the persistent and determined advancement of one's goals despite opposition and setbacks. This unwavering resolve determines whether one can ascend to the zenith of power. Stanford students exposed to this course have found it insightful, gaining a deeper understanding of the world they inhabit. However, there are those who approach it merely out of curiosity, believing that their existing skills are sufficient, showing little interest in the power dynamics at play. The author shares an illustrative story of a former student who, after taking the course, decided against employing its tactics. Instead, he co-founded an investment firm with the aim of minimizing power dynamics. However, years later, this student admitted to being ousted by his partners. This story imparts two crucial reminders. First, power in the workplace is a tool for survival, necessary even for those who simply wish to maintain their status and live well. Second, power serves as a shield. 
Even if one chooses not to engage in power plays, understanding them is essential to protect oneself from potential pitfalls. A third lesson, gleaned from feedback to the author, emphasizes that power serves as a lever for capability. The author has witnessed individuals, previously on the fringes of their organizations, become significant figures after applying the teachings on enhancing workplace power. These individuals often possessed the necessary education and skills, but were held back by external circumstances or self-perception. The book's overarching aim is to provide a means to fully realize and magnify these individuals' talents and efforts, helping them achieve the success they truly deserve. We're keen to hear your thoughts on our content. Feel free to share your opinions or recommend books in the comments section. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel Business Book Summaries and hit the notification bell to stay updated with our latest summaries. Thank you, and have a wonderful day.